Welcome back, guys. I am excited today. Welcome back to The Word is Crystal Clear. I'm your host, Crystal Kearns, and I have a really special guest. She is one of my spiritual mamas. She is a phenomenal woman of God. I am super excited to have her. You guys will love her. She just has a sweetness about her. I don't think anybody in the whole world doesn't love Kathy Swift. I'm just saying. <laughs> But um, I will bring her on in just a moment. I do want to let you know that at the end, we are going to mention some of her books. So stick around for that. Share this out. Let's get the word out. Let's let people know what's going on. A lot of people want to support international ministries and this kind of thing. This is your chance to do that. So let me bring on Mama Kathy, Dr. Kathy Swift. Hello. Good morning or afternoon. <laughs> Good morning. I think it's almost afternoon now. Uh, right, right. We're, we're right at that cusp. How about that? <laughs> so, Western Europe, where we serve with my husband, it's already seven o'clock at night. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That, that puts in perspective uh, how that goes, huh? That's wild. <laughs> it is. Let's see. I think it's nine o'clock there while the while the boys are watching and uh, in Reunion, one of our uh, our missions out of Western Europe, it's already like 10 o'clock there. So wow, it's late. It is. Well, I am so glad to have you on here. I'm super excited. I know Dr. Brett and uh, Marianne, I'm sure, are sharing this out and letting everybody know that you're on here. Um, so if you will, uh, tell them a little bit about how we met, if you will. I'm, I'm fixing the the, the post to put your stuff up. So go ahead and let them know how we met, if you will. <laughs> well, we met first through uh, the Glory in America conference. Mm -hmm. And yes. it was like, all right, the Lord was doing something there. And yes. <laughs> of course, you were a busy bee with the team. <laughs> and I didn't get a chance to know a whole lot about you at that point. But then, uh, Pastor uh, Rachel Schuffman, she invited me to come down to Oklahoma City in February, and uh, God has done the rest, and I believe it's a friendship for life. Amen. Amen. I can guarantee you that. You're stuck with me, girlfriend. <laughs> and the so, Lord the Lord linked our spirits together. Yes. And uh, yes. He did something fantastic for you during the ministry there uh, in at the women's conference through my heart. Uh, yes. Um, so let me let me explain that for to them a little bit so that people understand what we're referring to. Um, I uh, originally when I met Dr. Kathy, as she said, it was in the Glory in America conference. Um, I had been knowing that I was going to Africa since before <laughs> BC days, BC <laughs> days. Okay. But like, it's always been a heart. It's always been something in my heart. I love Africa. I love African people. I love the culture. I mean, we could go on and on, but I, timing is everything. Yeah. Timing is. is everything. And so, and, and, and you're going to really spell that out for us here in a minute. I know, but um, when I knew that I was going I always said, when, God, when do you want me to go? What's that look like? Well, when I met Dr. Kathy at Glory in America and I touched her book and she and I opened it up, I just I just fell back. I mean, I was just overwhelmed. And I, sudden, you began to cry. <laughs> and I am not a crier, which my eyes water now. This isn't tears, it's eyes water right now. <laughs> but But I am not a big crier, but I'm telling you, the power of God just hit me so heavy that I literally, if I remember right, I fell back against the wall. Yes. I mean, I was just, I mean, I was just floored. And why? Because a few months, maybe a month or so before that, God told me when I was at the altar to put my face in the carpet. Anyone who knows me, I'm like, mm, I, I, no, no, I'm good. No, thank you. And uh, <laughs> well, I finally listened. And as soon as I did, I saw the picture that was in her book. These it was a whole bunch of little boys and girls, yeah. African American, bald head babies. And I'm like, why are they all bald headed? I remember saying that. Why are they all bald headed? <laughs> what is that? What's that about? Take their hair off when they go to school. Oh, well, see, there's a reason right there. <laughs> because of lice and things uh, that they might get in their hair, and mm. most of them 
you know, they they are not hygienic, so mm. they shave their yes. heads. That's why. That's what, see, until this moment, I did not know that, but I just remember they were all bald head babies. That's what I called them. And um, when I seen her picture, I was just like, that's the kids. That's them. I've seen this. And anyway, God just is so wonderful. Um, just how he works. And so that started a amazing connection. Um, and then just the sweetest woman. I, she honored her son so beautifully at Glory in America. It was his moment. And you just, Kathy's one of those, that whenever she walks by, it's like she has a train coat of his glory that follows. I mean, there's just a presence of the Lord that, you know, it's just like a bubble of, just to explain it. But um, anyway, so and then at the women's conference in February, which is what she was mentioning I don't know if that's you or me on the notifications over there. It's dinging pretty loud on my side. But um, anywho, she, God told her to share her mantle, to impart her mantle to me, which is, I was wrecked. <laughs> I was like level 10 wrecked. <laughs> so it was a very glorious moment. That is a huge connection. It is a huge honor. Um, and God is just already begin to do things in February was last week. It feels like <laughs> time flies. Time is different in ministry. I promise it is. <laughs> so, but anyway, well, let's dive in. I really want people to hear what you have to say. Um, I sent you a couple of questions, um, but really we're Holy spirit led. So if none of those get answered, then, you know, this is his time. Um, but I do want people to hear, if, if you will, about how you got into missions, because I think sometimes have people have a dream and it um, it never gets off the ground or they run ahead of the Lord and end up in bad situations. So I would love for you to definitely at least cover that one because that's so crucial. But before we do, I want to invite you to pray for our viewers. Uh, I never want to run ahead of the Lord myself. <laughs> And so um, if you'll pray for us and if you want to jump into that, it's it's all you. <laughs> all right. Well, Father, we just thank you again for this opportunity and the many, many people that are watching across the airways. Lord, I thank you for the friendships that you've given us through the years. But right now we want you and the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us and to touch each and every one of us, that yes. whatever dream is in our heart, whatever uh, promise that you have given, Lord, we pray that it will be reignited uh, right now if it has laid dormant. Or God, if it's missionaries that are watching, that you will give them a fresh touch of that mantle that they know that they possess in that land that they're at. Now, Father, I pray that you would just be with Crystal and I, and Lord, let the words that we speak be uh, real and penetrate the hearts and the lives of all that are listening. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, well I'm excited to hear, so take it away. <laughs> 73. Now, that's a long time. Um, 1973, 1974, uh, I went to a women's conference uh, with in the Churches of God in North Carolina. I had taken a, a carload of ladies. We were pastoring uh, in Illinois. My first uh, husband, who has been gone now over 30 years, um, but he, he, we had taken and gone, and it was an exciting time, and that night, as Annette Watson began to speak, uh, she invited all of us to seek the Lord. And as I began to seek the Lord at my, <laughs> kneeling at my seat, I, I had a vision. Uh, um, I, and I heard the Lord call me to speak, call me to minister. But in the same breath, I saw a picture. And that picture was so real 
and it was black children all around me and they were reaching their little hands out to me and it, it was an amazing picture and i knew it was africa and i knew and i heard him speak in his quiet still voice through the holy spirit i'm calling you to africa that was it no. Now I was a mom with two little boys <laughs> helping my husband in a pastorate that was nip and tuck. And, um, and, and I, number one, I was uh, uncertain about sharing that I was called to ministry, mm -hmm. even though him and I were fine with it. And I'd been working with him in the pulpit and different places. But uh, at that time years ago, women were really frowned on uh, being in full-time ministry in leadership positions. Mm -hmm. So it took me a couple of months to, to tell him everything when I got back. <laughs> uh, but when I told him about Africa, he said, you know, I'm not called to Africa and uh, I, I don't see this happening. And he said some other things that were very pertinent at that moment. And I didn't realize what he was saying but our words our words out of our mouth be mm -hmm. careful what you say because many times those things happen well anyway uh let's fast forward now okay all right <laughs> passed in 1990 a wonderful godly husband a man of integrity ministry we did all kinds of things in those 30 years, I put them, those promises back in my pocket and back in yeah. the back of my mind. And sometimes when God gives us a promise, we think, oh, it's right now, but it's not. Yeah. Right, it's amen. He had the dream with the coat of many colors and then he shared it, but it was a long time coming before right. his brothers actually saw that to come to pass mm. but nonetheless he passes my kids are growing by then i have a daughter and two youngins uh, that are up in high school and college and i i try to get in everybody's pocket to go to africa but it didn't <laughs> right <laughs> not until 2005 august 2005 i made my first trip so you got the vision in 1973 and left in 2005. Yes. Yeah. That's Long a few years, sister. <laughs> and I don't believe, just for a tiny insert here, I do not believe that many uh, that God is calling today will have to wait 20 and 30 years. I believe we're at the place where uh, it's coming very quickly it's very quickly as god calls us but anyway i i went and i uh, i was with a team of four others and the leader said to me who was a dear friend he said kathy you're preaching in the morning the first place now i <laughs> never preached to another culture like this I had never preached with a translator and I'm a ventriloquist. I have a big, uh, I have a big turtle that, uh, that I minister to with children and et cetera. And I had him with me, Timmy, the turtle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh <so> my. <laughs> I had two translators that morning. Oh, one wow. And one for me. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was an amazing. It was like I put a glove on my hand and it fit. Wow. And I didn't miss a beat because God was in it. I called for the altar and I stepped down into the altar area. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get a little emotional every time I tell this. I stepped down into the altar and people and children came from all over. And I know there was probably four or 500 people all pressed around me and their hands were reaching up to me. And at that very moment, 
the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, do you remember the vision? You are home. This is wow. it. And wow. I, knew, I knew I had to get back here. I knew, but I didn't know how. I'd been a widow for 23, 24 years, something like that. Uh, yeah. The pockets were empty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But God, but God orchestrated. And in the next year, from that day till 2006, in the spring of 2006, I went four times back to Kenya. I don't wow. know how. But God gave me the money every time. And and the last time I sold everything in my house. I put it on the front lawn and God just took it. And people wow. came and bought it. And I closed the doors and I went to Africa to live. I told the kids, I'm going, I'll come back, but I'm going. And at that time, Dr. Brett and I were in a ministry together. He was my pastor. Whoosh! Let me tell you, that one was not always easy. <laughs> now, now these are a little a bit of tears. The Holy Spirit's hitting me when you're saying that. Can you press into that a little bit of what that's like to literally sell everything? And man, I mean, that's a place of just such sweet surrender, you know? I mean, well, that that is it. <laughs> that is it. Now, hear that one. The house. Don't <laughs> let me sell the house. But I've replenished it again and again and again. But yeah. that time, I didn't have anything. And I, I put my furniture, my, I love dishes, antique dishes, <laughs> dishes. And I put so much out, everything. And I had my sister-in-law came and helped me. Uh, a couple of friends came and helped me. And the people were just coming through the house and saying, is that, I'd say, yes, yes, that's for sale. Whatever you want, give me what you'll give me. It's all going to Africa. And I sold everything. Wow. <laughs> and, and some of it was really special. <laughs> but I knew I had to get there. And I right. didn't have money in the bank. And no organization would back me, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Church of God, Assembly of God, they said I needed to raise money for a year, a year and a half. And I knew God was saying now. I had mm -hmm. waited a long time. And so my 501c3 nonprofit sent me to Africa, Freedom House Ministries Incorporated. Wow. And that's how I went. Wow. Now so, I didn't have a house to live in when I got there either. Oh, no. So what did that look like? You're on the other side of the pond now. Nothing left to sell. What did you do? What happened? With dear people who are, who are dear to my heart, like moms and dads to me, especially Gordon Bloodworth and Glenda, his wife, um, I couldn't have done it without them. Glenda met me downtown with my huge duffel bags. I brought two huge duffel bags of clothing and my carry-on. That was it. <laughs> and they put me in their little house and their little apartment area back in the back. And, and God just worked a miracle. It was in that same season as I was teaching and doing different things that <laughs> that I met this precious lady who was coming to Kenya from uh, Singapore, and her name was Marcia Anderson. Wow. She's gone to be with the Lord. But I said to her, well, you're just coming, and I'm just coming. Why don't we just have a house together? And she said, oh, my goodness, no. I've, I've not been... <laughs> I've not been with anybody for years. I, I'm a divorced lady. I like the quiet and I was noisy. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out just a few months later. And we have had a house together 
for about seven years and wow. uh, it was wonderful. That's a good little time there, seven years, wow. Yes, because into the eighth year was when God called me to Western Europe and that was like, <laughs> wow. Why so you're, on, you're on both continents now? Oh yes, continuing. Wow. We are now 16 years in Africa uh, and have been almost 11 years in Western Europe with Chris, with my wonderful husband. Wow. So, but, well, let's not get too far ahead here. <laughs> so, so, uh, okay. So you, you've been living with this, this sweet lady um, for a little while. How did you get things really going over there? How did that really get started? I had been with her maybe about a year and, you know, I, I went to every opportunity that God gave me, including teaching at the Discipleship College, an affiliate of uh, Lee University in Cleveland, Tennessee, Churches of God. Mm -hmm. um, and I taught there. Uh, my, my computer keeps closing off. I hope it has not caused a problem. Um, anyway, I was teaching and someone uh, found out that I was there and they from America and they sent me a text and said, I have a home in a village about four hours from where you are. And I would love for you to have that house and do wow. ministry there. Well, it, I prayed, I went, I looked at it. I thought, oh, this is wonderful, but I don't want to start anything. And I asked God, no, I don't want to do this because <laughs> if I start something and people expect it, then what if I can't continue? When we go to another land, especially third world countries, let's not promise them the moon and the stars. Yeah. Because you can't keep it going. Right. It's worse than if you didn't start it at all. And that was my prayer. I didn't want to feed kids and help them become dependent on food when they were okay with not having food for a day or two. Wow. And and that's where I was. But God wouldn't let go of it. And I went into the village, no electricity, no running water, and I began. And in my front yard, every morning, I would open the front door at 6 a.m. And there would already be 20 or 25 in my yard. They needed food. They needed wow. to take their kids because they were dying with AIDS. They, they wow. wanted school fees. Uh, could they have a job? It was on and on. And every morning I'd empty, I'd pull my pockets out of my uh, trousers or my skirt and I'd say, you see these pockets, they're empty. But I have a God who has lots of food and all we have to do is pray. And I, I can't even begin to tell you how many times a day that I prayed with people and with kids and with workers and and we worked seven acres seven acres of land by hand one wheelbarrow <laughs> wow i was the only one in the field that had that had uh, boots on everybody else was barefoot <laughs> Wow. So let me ask you a couple of like, clarifying questions here. So what were y'all planting in the field? What was it you were growing? I learned so much. Uh, I'm a farmer at heart. People don't believe that when they see me all dressed up, but I'm a farmer and, and I grew up on the farm and did all those things. So we planted corn and beans and ground nuts, peanuts. Okay. Wow. And, uh, oh, hello, Tarsicio, <laughs> uh, all the way from France. Um, but we, I learned how to plant it and be conservative. We would dig, uh, dig a hole uh, all the way down in a row, and we'd give 
one can of bean seeds and one can of corn seeds and one can with fertilizer. And we put it all in the same hole and then someone behind it would cover it. So we had a, wow. a belt line, uh, shall I say, of different yeah. people doing different things. And that's how we planted the field. Well, the beans come up first. I mean, they harvest first while your corn's shooting up, your beans harvest. So we'd go in and pull the beans, have a big tarp uh, on the front lawn of the where, where I lived. And you put them all there and it looks like a bunch of weeds. Then you take a big stick and you beat those beans to death. <laughs> and the and the beans come out of mm -hmm. out of the uh, vine. You take the vine and throw it away. It's chaff, and mm -hmm. you throw it away. And then you have to willow. Now you know what that means. I didn't. I no. thought it. <laughs> you scoop up the beans and you pour them out, and the chaff blows away with the wind. Oh, okay. We've heard this before. <laughs> In the Bible. But I I didn't harvest a hundred years ago with grandma and grandpa's, but mm -hmm. I lived in the fields in that area. No electricity, no running water. I had to teach them how to even build a an outhouse. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, we had to have those things, you know. Yeah. So it was a learning process for them and me. And then the day came that I was feeding, and I didn't realize it. I was feeding 500 in my yard in a week's time. Wow. And I couldn't keep it up. So I marched to the little broken down school. And the headmaster called the people of the village. And we decided to have a, a, a work progress together. And I told him, I said, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. This and you and me together, we'll do it. Wow. We had, we were just going to feed the preschool. <laughs> there were only 15 kids in the preschool. By the time they find out in a week <laughs> that that this is going to happen, did you know that that preschool became 60 kids immediately? Wow, that is a huge jump. <laughs> wow. And so each year we added another grade because I couldn't let those little ones who graduated to first grade, I couldn't let them not have food every day. So I added yeah. them, and so now we're all the way through the school. <laughs> wow, wow. Eight, class eight, almost, yeah, class yeah. eight. And we, we prepare mm -hmm. 3,000 plus meals every week at lunchtime, and then three times a week, they have a breakfast drink that's real nutritional. And because of this, continued process all these years mm -hmm. four cooks now not one <laughs> um, wow. because of that the government came in and uh several years ago now four years ago they built a brand new building with electricity for oh, the preschoolers <laughs> and and they did it free because the aptitude of these children that are coming through this school has changed drastically. The sick level of death, high AIDS and high TB in this area mm -hmm. has diminished 15 to 20% because wow. of good nutrition every day. Wow. And education of how they get there, I'm sure, is a factor as well. Yeah, we... We we take care of many, and as because we're a faith based ministry, it's twenty five wow. years old. Freedom House Ministries Incorporated, 
and we're almost into our 17th year in Kenya, in the bush, <laughs> and they still don't have electricity in the surrounding homes in that village. They don't have running water. They still live much like they did when I was there, but the schoolyard has electricity. And since that time, 20 minutes from there, now, remember, I started feeding in my yard, 20 kids. It went to 500 a week. Now we feed 3,000 plus meals every week. But we've 20 minutes from there, we've built a beautiful church. And they say it's the best church and building in all of Kenya in the churches of God. We have now built three large Sunday school classrooms and a small parsonage on that grounds. We have another preschool now there and we feed there as well every day. And now we're building again. <laughs> wow. Been in the village for 16 needy kids. We're going to have a beautiful, big, nice home. No electricity, no running water, and mm. we ought to see the outhouse. It's <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> so we need money to finish. Well, well, how does this really work? I mean, help help the the modern day missionary in training, if you will, catch the glimpse of how does this really work? I, I know God, and we we can all agree on that. But what's the logistics of this? How does this happen? Donations? I mean, like, what, what's that look like? I, I live totally by faith. And if I had not had missionary friends that I lived with and, and saw the same vision I had, there were times I didn't have food for myself. People would send money for a project, but they forget without the missionary, there is no project. <laughs> right. <laughs> People don't get that right now. First of all, if you're called, make sure you're called. Yeah. Number two, make sure you have support. I had a $1,500 base when I left. Promises. But a lot of those promises fell through the cracks. And I had to re- do and refine after I was on the field. Yeah. When I was there in the midst of the war in Kenya, when thousands were killed, people, the reporters from America would call me in the middle of the night and it would go across the syndicate in America. What was happening? And people would send money to build houses and help displaced people. Why? But did they ever send a dime for me? No. Mm. And it was very hard. So if you're called, make sure you have a good base. God was faithful all through it all. But it was tough at times. And we had to pray. Many times I'd grab those boys' hands that were there in my front yard and say, Boys, we don't have any money to buy food for tomorrow. Join hands with me. Let's pray and ask God to send money. Now I'm in Kenya, in the bush, nobody around. I'm an hour and a half thereabouts from any city. The only white person around. Yeah. The lady at the boot. Yeah. We'd pray, and I'm not kidding, no less than an hour. And I'd get a text on my little flip phone. That's all I had was a flip phone. And that was amazing to them. And they'd say, what was it? And I'd say, oh, somebody just put $100 in the account. We can buy food. And, wow. and I'd go on the back of a motorcycle, 30 minutes, and I'd go to the little bitty market and buy some fresh vegetables and things so that we could have food for the next day. Wow. I what a journey. <laughs> <multiple food. laughs> yes. 
Wow. So what would you, what would that look like? Grains, uh, rice, things like that? Oh, just if they can have corn, they, they take it to the mill and they grind it and mm. they make uh, in water, they put that and they boil it till the water's gone. And it's like a mound and it's called Ugali. And that's their staple. That's their everyday food. And then they mm -hmm. grow a green called uh, Sukuma. I'm sorry. I want to say Sukuma Wiki. That means pushing the week uh, yeah. because they use it every day. And, and they made it every day. Uh, God is oh, yeah. just big. Yes, Brett. God has done this. 16 and a half years, people have supported this ministry wow. to do all of these things. It's not me. I'm a conduit, Crystal. I'm yes. a conduit from heaven to whoever needs it. Yeah. And even this morning, I reached out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Even this morning, I was reaching out and an individual said, give me your project number with Church of God. And I did. And he said, I'm putting a thousand dollars in the uh, in the mail today to help you because I have five hundred dollars right now in the account to help us the rest of the month to feed. Besides the match program that's that I'm raising to, to put the roof and the cement walls and the floor for the new house. Wow. But God's faithful. If we do what he tells us to do, he's faithful. That's so good. That's so good. So uh, help, help people understand. I mean, to me, <laughs> understanding how God provides is a miracle enough. I mean, it, just to yeah. see it continued and see what God is doing. Um, and at the end, she'll show some of her books and some things that she's doing, which is all towards this effort. That's what it's all about. But help people. I, I'd love for people to hear like the biggest miracle or the beer, biggest um, kind of wow moment, if you will, that you have seen over there. Because people need to understand the full vision. That That's my thought. You know what I mean? You got to walk it out. And there's hard work and there's daily pouring into people's lives and some of them receive it and some of them don't. Now, that's the same thing we do in America and in Western Europe. It's a one on one. People have to know you're real and yeah. they love them. And if they catch you're real and and that you really love them and you care about them then they're going to learn to love your god i was privileged to to help and and be a part of lots of different uh, things across kenya the one thing i thoroughly loved was i was when i would come back to the <laughs> to the city life after about mm. three and a half four months out in the village then i'd come back and get a good shower and, <laughs> you know, teach a little bit. But I would yeah. also travel with crusades, a, a big crusade. And I did all the children's ministry. And everywhere I went, I started the whole crusade because the children's program would be in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I've seen God stop rain. Just like wow. Elijah said, there'd be no rain. I've seen him do it with kids praying. Wow. But I've also seen God heal my foot that was broken just minutes before with a classroom of two-year-olds in America. So these miracles are not just for another country. Yeah. Okay. I, I've seen God multiply food in the pot as we were feeding people. When we didn't have 20, enough for 25 more, we didn't have enough for one more. And we put our hands on the top of that pot and we prayed. And I expected when we opened it, the whole thing to be full. It wasn't. There was just enough for one more person. And my cook reached down and 
filled it full, that plate, and reached down and filled it full. And 25 plus more people were fed from one serving. I've seen him do it. I've seen him open ears that have not ever heard in 21 years. I heard the first words out of a girl's mouth when she was 21 and the whole village had seen her. I've seen people with their legs broken and a little bitty. They couldn't even walk on them. And people would bring them on a blanket every day. And we prayed on them every day. And every day, those legs would begin to fill out more and more until the seventh day, they stood up and walked. And they hadn't walked in years. I, yeah. I've seen it all. I, I have personally prayed for many of those people. I personally prayed for a man who was dead. And I see breath come back in you. And because I worked as a nurse in the hospital years ago, I know when somebody's not there. <laughs> And I was in Ethiopia in the slums. Do you believe this man? This man was a Muslim when he came to. His name was Muhammad. And we shared life with him through Jesus Christ. And we shared that Jesus was the one who had given him life back. And then, wow. But the greatest miracle, babe, across the world, is when one person says, I believe, I believe in Jesus. That's what it's all about. We can go to heaven named. We can go to heaven blind, but we can't leave heaven without Jesus in our heart. Amen. Yeah. And souls is what we should be about. Souls. Yeah. And everywhere we go. That you got me a wreck over here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so beautiful. He gives protection. He protected me and Marcia and my friends, missionary friends during the war. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did sleep with a machete under my bed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I, uh, and they were they were killing people all around us and shooting and uh, burning people alive in their homes but god kept us and i was able to go have you ever seen these movies on tv that have the white tents uh where people army people are living you know yeah. years ago in the war in the civil war and different well i've seen that firsthand 30,000 people in just one camp wow. because they were misplaced because of the war. It was a Sodom and Gomorrah. I would start at the beginning and it took me four hours to walk to the back and all the way back to the front. And I shared wow. Jesus and I sang and I played with the kids little ones whose arms were burnt or they're chopped off because of just stopped and prayed with mamas that had babies in their arms. God was so good. He was so good to allow me to see all of those things and to be a part of his kingdom in another land. And the best part is when I thought he was taking it away, when I cried and told him I was leaving, he gave it back. <laughs> wow. I didn't even know that he was already in the midst of <laughs> things through me, and I didn't even know it. Wow. So what was there something that happened that made you think that it was ending, or was there... Uh... I had met this... <clears throat> man who is a 
in the midst of riots and tribal wars. God sent a seven foot. Oh, yes, she, he sent the angel to walk by my side. Yes, I forgot that one, Chris. Yeah, I had angels walk me through the war zones and they didn't even see me. And that was amazing. But wow. yes, I had met Chris Swift at a missionary conference, uh, at a mandatory meeting in America because I was in, I was in America and you're supposed to go if you're home, you're supposed to go there. I didn't want to go. I fussed about it. In fact, I went in a day, almost a half a day late, sat by myself. And this feller got up to teach and I I thought, ah, I don't like this. It's boring, you know. And about that time I I said I heard, and he's gonna ask you out. And I jumped. I said, What? And I looked at the <laughs> and there was nobody. Now I'd been a widow for almost 23 years. And then I realized it was God speaking, and I've only heard him two or three times verbally. And that was one of them. So, Mr. Swift, you're watching. You know you were, you were sent. But I looked at him and I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, Lord, I'm not going out. But I did. I went out for coffee. Watch out. Don't go for coffee. <laughs> and so I knew God was doing something. But you have to understand, when I closed the door and went, to Africa. I told him, I'm going to live there till I die. That's my destiny. Yeah. And so when Mr. Swift came into my life, I got upset at the Lord. Do you ever get upset at God? <laughs> There's <I'm>, moments. <laughs> he loves you. He knows you. And yeah. I got upset and I said, God, you called me to Africa. Now listen to this, my dear friends, <laughs> who are called to ministry, who are called to missions. God spoke to me in my ear and said, Kathy, I never called you to one place. I right. called you to be a mother of many nations. Wow. I had made the trip, my dream, my vision. Mm. Watch out. God's always mm. got something better for you. When he closes one door, <laughs> he'll open up a great big one. And he did. And I went to Europe, 13 wow. countries we travel, and islands. And then about six months into it, God just wide open exploded the work in Africa. And people were already raising money for a church to build it. And I didn't even know it. Wow. And that's wow. how it began. So what <laughs> happened when you left Africa to go to Europe? Did you have people in place to keep it running while you were gone? Or how did that work? Yes, in fact, isn't it amazing they do it without me? <laughs> I have so uh, reliable individuals, yeah. my same two cooks that began with me, and the same dear, sweet lady minister who. I trained and taught and encouraged. She began her church for children with sticks. Our right. church was called the Stick Church. That's <laughs> how it began. And now, today, it's one of the biggest buildings and the nicest in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but wow. God, he has a plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 is not just words. He really does have a plan. Crystal, he's got a plan for you. He knows where you've been. He knows where you're going, youngin. And he knows the lives you can touch because of your history, because of the prophetic move in your life. 
because yeah. of the training with Pastor Wren and Pastor Rachel. God's got big plans, girl. Big plans. I know that's true. <laughs> the things he showed me are so much bigger than me, and I'm like, okay, God. <laughs> the amazing thing about it is when God shut that door in Africa, it's just like Chris is saying, mm. I thought I was going to a white world. Now, I was in a a, a black world. I was there, yeah. <laughs> and I loved it. I never, I just was, I was at home. I was where I was supposed to be, but I didn't have a clue that it was a multicultural world across Western Europe. Wow. We have 15 to 20 different cultures on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, wherever we are in the world. If, if Chris and I are in America and right now we are for a couple of weeks, then we got to make a trip back to the Netherlands for a big youth explosion. But, Wherever we are, he'll be speaking Dutch or, or French or or <laughs> Spanish or and I have to keep him with me because I don't understand all those languages. That's awesome. But God is so good. Yeah. God's kingdom is with all of us. He yeah. loves all. It doesn't matter who we are, it doesn't matter where we've come from. We wow. can come from the other side of the track. We can come um, poor, but he makes us rich, rich in friendships, rich in our experiences of life, rich is in so many different ways within. He fills our heart. He gives us his love. Yeah. Sometimes he'll touch us and heal us. He'll heal us home or he'll heal us here, but he'll heal us. Amen. So let me ask you this. What is um, kind of the long-term vision for what God has showed you? Where are you going? What, where, what's the next? You know, you mentioned another building, but what, what are you, what's your goal? What's his goal? <laughs> My goal is to make that project self-sustaining. Yeah. That they are able to maintain it on a week-to-week -week basis and then occasionally we can give to them uh, mm -hmm. i mean right now yes freedom house and all the people that help us through the churches of god through mm -hmm. baptist churches through methodist churches through every denomination because freedom house the project there is non-profit non-denominational and you can be a part of that uh, our vision is to make them self-sustaining and there are i i'm glad to say there are several of the guys i trained 12 12 on a day-to-day -day basis and of the 12 seven are in full-time ministry in the work of the Lord, doing different things. They are paying it forward, if you please, what I did for them. And I'm so proud of them. And Pastor Beatrice, she is my administrator, my feet on the ground. But now the boys, they're men, and they're taking on ownership, and they're helping her. And I can trust them. And I get, if I send $300, I get receipts immediately, pictures on my phone that show how they've spent their money. They are reliable. And that's my dream that they'll carry it on because that's legacy when we work ourselves out of a job. I want to complete this project for the kids. Uh, we have 16 there. We have four in Nairobi that we support uh, in a home of one of my guys. He's a single guy, <laughs> but four children he took in because the parents died with AIDS and they have no family. So we support them. 
And then we have other kids in the village, in the homes of other of the guys that we support. And we support Pastor Beatrice. She has children that she has taken into the house and she lets them sleep there at night and she takes care of them during the day. It's an ongoing project and only God can sustain it. But I've taught them how to plant. I've taught them to get chickens and raise chickens. We've, we've given goats and they can raise the goats. Uh, we've taught the ladies how to be uh, weavers of baskets and make food and make and bake things. And it's from ground one, zero. They have far exceeded my expectations. And God is at the top of the list because he has exceeded it as well. Thank you for allowing me to come today. I want to show you this little book. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the books. It's called Neat, Harry, and Huntsman. It's about two little, two little frogs. And that book is about obedience. It's a... Uh, <laughs> Kids or parents get stuck in the muck, just Amen. like you do. And that little book uh, sells on Amazon. We have an ebook. We have a, a, a downloadable, printable uh, coloring book. It's on Amazon. It's also on Redemption Press. Uh, it's also on Galilee.com. Uh, on in Western Europe. It is in English, uh, but we support the ministry in Kenya through that. Wow. But I'm very excited, very, very, very excited to share God's extraordinary love, a brand new book, and it's 24 devotionals and uh, testimonies of women across Western Europe that uh, have seen God's faithfulness. And it's wow. a great book to share ebook because it has, are you ready? Six. It has six languages on the ebook. Spanish, French, Portuguese, Italian, um, Dutch, English. Thank goodness for English for me. Uh, <laughs> but that book, it's just hot off the press. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, uh, but the ebook is really a great tool to share because you can share it with all your different friends of different cultures. And it's only $10, uh, $10 to share. Wow. Uh, and $10 on Galilee.com. But soon it's already downloaded on Amazon. We're just waiting. We're waiting for it to be available, but Amazon will also have it probably $12, $13 uh, mm. when it's there. But I'm telling you, this is amazing because in the very back, we have put a page that says, who do you say Jesus is? And it gives opportunity for a non-believer that's read this to make a commitment to Christ and to believe by putting her name in her own book and putting the date and knowing I gave my life to Jesus because of what I've read. Wow. So two brand new. Um, I've still got more coming. I'm working on some. I have friends watching right now. Athena uh, for Redemption Press. She's gone the journey with me. She was wow. she's the one who took this and made it real. So I'm just telling you that Beautiful. I've done amazing things in these last 12 to 15 years. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. But so, it's because I was obedient. Yeah. No matter what, you have to be obedient. Yeah.
regardless of the cost. That's so good. I have a brand new stove sitting here behind the computer <laughs> that just got unloaded this morning. Let me shout it out to you. I have a 32 year old stove sitting in my kitchen here in America. That was my last big gift from being in the business world as my yeah. last uh, sweet husband, that precious man, Bernie Watson, was in the hospital and the president of the company called me and said, you pick out what you want. I picked out that gas stove. And today, because of precious people, mm. I was able to buy a new gas stove. Now, that may not mean much to y'all, but to a missionary, <laughs> little by little, Mr. Chris and I, we add something each year when we come home <laughs> for a day or two. Yeah. Um, and we're replenishing the house. Wow. No, God's replenishing it. You know, you you say obedience is how it happened. I I cannot echo that enough. And it sounds like, because see, when I hear your story, I heard obedience when God spoke it into your heart with your first husband. And your first husband essentially said, this isn't for me. And so you, you obediently put it on a shelf. You obediently said, okay, Lord, I know you said this to me, and I'm going to trust you to walk it out. But I'm going to honor my husband because that is what the word says. Exactly. And, and so you put it on a shelf, but you never lost hope of it. You never said no. You just, you left it where it was at. It was always there. Yeah. And then you sold everything you had um, and, and you tried to pursue it when the opportunity came, but obedience. And so I see such a glory and beauty in you trying to replenish your house all these years later. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I'm, that's I'm so there. long. I rented it a time or two, and in 2000, it was almost completely destroyed by a renter. Left me with 20 some thousand dollars worth of damage, and insurance wouldn't take care of it. Oh, no. So, yes, it's been a step in progress, but at least it's a place where Mr. Chris and I can come and mm. hang our clothes and repack a suitcase and run down the road to share with somebody else at a church. Wow. So how much <laughs> does one book feed the, a child in Africa? How does that work? $12 or $15, whatever it is that you pay, will take care of one child for almost two weeks. Wow. Almost feed them yeah. two weeks. And when we go to Starbucks, and we pay $4.90 for a cup of coffee. <laughs> well, would you put a dollar away for Freedom House at the same time? Yeah. Before you know it, you're going to have $20, 30 $40 saved. And that's what it takes to support a child. And right yeah. now, we have 35 kids that we support completely. Food clothing, school fees, everything. Wow. Besides five cooks, our pastor <laughs> every month, and other things that come. We have wow. two in college. That's expensive. We, I could go on and on. It costs between six and seven thousand dollars each month for us to continue to do what we do. Wow. God has done it for yeah. 16 and a half years. Now, it wasn't that in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I could have done it. <laughs> That's right. But so, so buying one of these books feeds a kid, one kid for almost two weeks. Almost two weeks. I can't feed my kid for $10 for a day. <laughs> Try to go to McDonald's. It's awful. Yeah. It's almost $10 a person if you drink, if you get a drink and food. Yeah. And not even good food, let's be honest. <laughs> don't go to McDonald's. I don't either. I don't eat there. I understand. <laughs> wow. But you know, go ahead. I just, I hope people understand 
the impact, um, even just buying one book or just sewing into the ministry really is. I feel like if you're involved in a church at the bare minimum that everyone should get the, the turtle book because it's a great gift to the children's ministry. You know, and it, it's a way to help sow in and feed it. You know, everyone talks about this future generation doing this and that. And I hear all the time of how terrible, you know, our kids are and this and that. Well, instead of complaining, let's sow into future generations. Let's get behind fixing it. I, I'm one like, why are we complaining? Why aren't we fixing? Why aren't we doing? Why aren't we praying? Why aren't we leading? Exactly. <laughs> when you go to different things or you hear different people say, oh, I've done this and I've done that. Let's show people the how to's. Let's take it down to the basics. This is what's needed. This is how we did it. We didn't sit around idle and wait on people to give. I worked with my hands. And when we harvested those fields, we had one wheelbarrow almost a mile from the house and we had baskets each one of us and each one of us took a row and we shucked it right there on the vine and put the corn in our basket and would walk to the end and empty it then somebody else would take it to the to the um side and and they threw it out every day we threw it out to dry and every day at 3.30, we brought it back in before the rains. And yeah. every day, we threw it back out two, three weeks before we could even shuck it. How did oh, you no. shuck it? With our fingers, with our thumbs. Come on. I know what it is. Wow. I know how to work. And when I was in America, I cleaned people's toilets mm. so that I would make a living to keep preaching the gospel and sharing on the weekends and taking care of my kids at the same time. Wow. Heart today mm -hmm. pays for tomorrow. That is such a word right there. Hard work today pays for tomorrow. So good. I love it. Well, Miss Kevin, I just, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you so much for being on here. I just hope and pray. Let me just pray for over this. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just ask that you will just make a huge increase in their financials for the mission that they are on, for the, the journey that you have them on, Lord. I ask that you will put it on someone's heart today, several people's heart, just to help finance this and bless this and move this mission forward. Yes. Not for Dr. Kathy and for Chris or her family, but for the lives that you have entrusted in their hands, Lord, that they will begin to see an increase and that they will be covered for months to come so that yes. they will be able to continue the harvest, Father, continue what they're doing, Lord. And I just pray for the people on the ground in these other countries that are doing the day-to-day -day work in their absence, Lord, I ask that they will be strong physically and mentally and emotionally, that you will begin to just move in their lives personally so that this reaches further than Dr. Kathy and her family will ever know this side of heaven, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray prosperity and provision and wisdom and discernment over them, Lord. I ask for just creative miracles to continue, the food to continue to multiply, Lord. I ask for your blessed hand upon them and in their personal lives, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And Amen. I thank you for that, Lord. And, and I also just pray for Crystal, Lord. I thank you, God, that she's been obedient to walk this out. I'm thankful, Lord, for the lessons that she's learned, that each of us have learned in life, because it is the hard knocks that teach us when we reach up and hold on to your hand, Lord. So I pray blessings over her and her family and the youngins. And Lord, that, that you would just open up new avenues, bring key people into her life that she can share on this podcast that will bless the multitudes. Father, yes. let this ministry go farther than she could have ever imagined. And I thank you that you are the one orchestrating our lives step by step, one day at a time. 
as we walk it out in obedience. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being on here. I cannot thank you enough for your time. And uh, I know I know this has impacted people. Several have shared it. And I just hope that they'll sow into it and really receive from the life lessons and the wisdom that you've shared today. So I, I genuinely have appreciate your time well thank you so much and you know people especially in america a lot of people in this area they know me the reporters have reported on my africa journey <laughs> so many different times and they know me i'm real and crystal yeah. you know, what you see is who i am yeah yeah, for sure. I I just, I've loved every time I've seen you and I, I can't wait to see you again in person and get to spend more time with you. You just impart wisdom. <laughs> yes, big hugs for sure. Love to everybody. Thank you. Again. I, sure will. I love you, Dr. Kathy. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, honey. Bye-bye. Uh, All right, bye-bye. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed today's podcast and getting to hear Dr. Kathy's heart. What a powerful woman of God. What a heart for the lost and you know being a missionary is giving up your, your your life in a lot of ways and you know the word says that we were bought with a price we are not our own and i don't know who <laughs> offhand embodies that better than dr kathy so um i really do ask i rarely i don't know if i've ever asked anyone to sew anything on one of these podcasts i am asking as a favor for me for our Lord and Savior, however you want to want to word that, um, to sow into what Dr. Kathy's doing and her family. Um, it is definitely not just her. You can never be a one-man army. Um, she has several people that are a part of that and that are helping her to live out the mission and the call on her life. Um, but I'm asking you today, even if it's $5, uh, buy a book, sow into your local church, whatever that looks like. But get these things in your hands, make a gift today. The comments are loaded with ways to sew. I'm leaving my last comment up here, not share out this broadcast because I like people to watch me, but so you can sew into her into what she's doing. And um, so I just pray that God moves on your heart today, that everything that you do choose to give will be multiplied and stretched and that it will bless everyone that it touches. And <laughs> You never know the side of glory, the impact that you make. And your 10, 20, 30, 100, whatever dollars could change lives over there. We don't deal with things the same way they do over there. And so every little bit helps. So anyway, I love you guys. God bless you. Thank you for being on today. Please sew into that. And until next time. Bye. <laughs> love you.